I've already prepared my paper, it's watercolour paper, and I've put acrylic gesso over the top and dried it. I've actually stuck it down with some framing tape on just an ordinary grey board, but you can use MDF or something like that, some nice solid surface to stick your watercolour painting down. Or you could use a canvas or canvas board or even acrylic paper, whatever you have available. Now I'm going to be starting off in this acrylic painting with a wet on wet technique. So I'm using a large flat brush and wetting the surface. And I'm using my palette knife now, mixing up some blue and brown, any blue and brown will do. And I'm painting this onto the wet surface. So you get all these lovely effects. The paint is thick and creamy, but then as it catches the water on the paper, it sort of bleeds out. And it's a lovely cool colors here to represent sort of a stormy seascape scene. And as you can see there, the instruction there is to allow the paint to run into the puddles. So you get all these exciting results. So as you can see, I've squeezed all of my paints out into my makeshift Stay Wet palette. So I've just got a kitchen tray with some kitchen towel actually, damped kitchen towel. And then I put some parchment paper or baking paper over the top, then squeeze out my acrylics. And that way the damp kitchen towel will, will seep through a process called osmosis seep through the baking paper so it will stop it will actually prevent your acrylics from drying out so really try that out it's a really good way of keeping your acrylics nice and wet so that they don't dry out because they will do and they'll dry into little plastic blobs if you're not careful so try that out it's a really simple thing you can do at home. As you can see here now, I'm tilting and spraying. One of the things I really enjoy the most in acrylic or watercolor painting to get these lovely atmospheric results. And because I've gessoed underneath as well, you can really create a lot of texture with the gesso, make lots of marks. And as you can see there, there's some lovely texture with the gesso coming through, especially where the acrylic paint is very transparent. So I'm just adding a little bit more blue and brown and a touch of black there just to create some rocks and atmosphere. And as you can see there over there on the left hand side, the way the paints run down, it looks like reflection. It's quite magical. So I'm just adding a little bit more blue and brown in the foreground here with a touch of black and just kind of creaming on this beautiful acrylic paint. It's such a lovely way of painting rocks. It really does free you up as well in painting in this style. And I actually believe anyone can do this from beginners to more experienced painters. Everyone, it puts everyone on a level playing field because it's such good fun. And I'm just using that large brush, any large brush will do, just to soften edges here and there and just get the paint moving. Remember to keep tilting. And I'm just letting a little bit of stray kind of watery paint here drift down to kind of create some cloud effects. And as you can see there, I've even left some dry bits. So actually the painting, the actual gesso is still showing through and it gives a little bit of sparkle. I mean, that might go, but the moment it's still there and I don't mind. And there's actually an impression of almost buildings now in the distance that I've only just noticed now that I'm doing this voiceover. But the spraying does create some textured effects and it again shows that lovely gesso textured marks coming through. Through. So I've decided just to use a bit of kitchen towel now to lift off this moon that I've got that's sort of I've decided to make it into the moon because sometimes happy accidents happen and you can create it and make it something of your own, you know, and you know, if you see something that looks like buildings, then go with it. It's so creative. This is quite abstract in a way. Now I'm just tilting and spraying again. As you can see, I'm wearing gloves and I've got an old towel as well. So you might want to think about that because it's quite a messy technique fun but a little bit messy and I'm just letting all this paint sort of drip down and just again seeing what happens seeing what textures occur and just sort of again I'm using the kitchen towel to lift off and to create light when you use gesso it's really easy to lift off acrylic paint afterwards especially in this instance here it's it's kind of a nice smooth surface and it really comes off nicely now I'm going in with my white paint with my palette knife to create even more light and just painting it in here it's 
thick and creamy paint. There's no water in this white paint except for the moisture on the surface of the painting and I'm really enjoying it. It's picking up a little bit of grey watery paint that's actually on the surface so it's given me a little bit of soft tone and greys that you have in the sea and I've added a little bit of blue now with my palette knife to show a bit of the water coming through and it's very experimental this. It's, it's kind of just very therapeutic actually. You're just having a play, creating texture now with a knife, almost like little soft waves in the foreground and using the tip of the knife to create more texture and to almost scratch into that thick creamy paint and sort of smearing it here to give the illusion of water. You can see I've only used a handful of colours here and really just one large brush, a spritzer bottle and a palette knife and anyone can have a go at this. The colours are just literally black, blues, browns and white. And what I've done now is I'm actually spraying some water onto this thick creamy paint and it sort of gets this lovely effect of all that lovely um, watery paint now drizzling down across those rocks. I'm forever sort of trying out different things just to see what happens. It's, it's really just experimentation here and I'm just creating a loss some of those rocks so I'm painting them back in again and that's the beauty of acrylics as well actually is that if something goes wrong let it dry and you can paint straight over the top I'm using some browns and a bit of yellow ochre here just to create a bit of warmth in the foreground and a contrast to these sort of very cool um, pale sea and then using again using the palette knife to create some textures and it just it really is quite nice now it's got that lovely sort of strong warm darks of the rocks against that cool lighter sea colour and I'm just sort of finessing and putting some final touches now little details of the rocks just to bring it to life and I'm actually adding now some more white paint and I've watered it down slightly just so I can spatter with my palette knife so it looks like the spray of the ocean waves just to finish off and I love to use the framing tape as well because when you remove it at the end you get this lovely white border that really kind of you know you can look at your painting objectively to see if you need to do any more work to it but I think I will leave it there for now Thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions please put them in the comments section below and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. If you would like to see more videos like this why not subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get updates of my latest acrylic videos. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.